Vision Cataract Surgery. Now I invite uh, Dr. Pradeep Mohanta sir, who is going to show his technique of pre-chop, a new pre-chopper which he has designed. Thank you very much. We need a, a bigger clap for uh, Dr. Sohail Irfan Khan. He is the man who, is, who has uh, introduced pre-chopper in a new way in India. We have seen Dr. Akahoshi using pre-chopper. We tried that, but we could not do it. It, was, it has steep learning curve. Uh, it works beautifully in Akahoshi's hands, but we could not do it. So, why should we learn pre chopping? It will be helpful in many surgical situations like soft cataracts cataracts with weak genule, two to four clock hours of genule adhesions. I usually use pre-chop in soft cataracts, but Dr. Sohil has shown that it can be used in hard cataract also. In IFIS, intraoperative floppy iris syndrome, we can divide the nucleus under visco in several parts, and after that, we can finish off the surgery quickly before the iris, before the people gets small. The difference between Akahoshi's pre-chopper and Dr. Sohil's and Mohanta's pre-chopper is, in Akahoshi's pre-chopper, in soft cataracts, we have seen that Akahoshi doesn't use any sustainer. So he stresses on the genual and divides the nucleus in soft cataracts. But in our cases, sustainer is used in all cases. So the nucleus is having a support from the other side, 180 degree away. Lateral separation in Akahoshi's pre-chopper is limited, but in our pre-choppers, it is in your hand how much lateral separation you want to do. Learning curve in Akahoshi's pre-chopper is steep. Learning curve in our pre-choppers is maybe five to 10 surgeries. Akahoshi's pre-chopper is a costly instrument. Our instruments are economic. Now, the steps in using uh, Dr. Sohail's or Dr. Mohanta's pre-chopper, I have designed a pre-chopper where the pre-chopper is straight. It is not curved in, like my friend Dr. Sohil's pre-chopper, the front is goes straight. It's a very simple design. The sustainer goes through side port first. These steps I'm showing in this video. First, the sustainer goes. Then the pre-chopper goes. Now the pre-chopper is embedded in the nucleus just in front of the main wound. Then the sustainer hooks the opposite equator. And then the two instruments come to each other. The sustainer comes towards you and the pre-chopper moves towards the other side. And lateral separation is done. See this again. And I want all of you to learn this this is going to be the next step in cataract surgery because you don't depend on machine much. Any machine, even upper Somis Galaxy Pro Orbit machine will be a good machine if you can preach off the nucleus. So you don't depend on very high-end machine. 
And now my pre-chopper is uh, straight on. I'll just go. This is a grade on a nucleus. So you can see this is a posterior subcapsular cataract. Hydro dissection is done. The antechamber is filled up with visco. And now the pre-chopper goes. First, the sustainer goes. Then the pre-chopper is embedded. The sustainer hooks the equator. And you divide the nucleus. And if you try to do this with your handpiece, it is going to take about four to five minutes. And this is Neto Rosatelli's spin. If you do this, then the pieces will come to you easily and cortical aspiration will be very easy. In soft cataracts, I usually divide the nucleus into three pieces, one heminucleus and one heminucleus is divided into two pieces. And now in grade two nuclear sclerosis. The earlier one was grade one plus nuclear sclerosis. This is grade two. Initial steps we forward. Capsulorexis is done, hydrodissection is done. And now the same way. As the nucleus gets harder, the nucleus will tend to rotate. So you have to keep a balance in your hand. The tip lengths of these instruments, Dr. Sohels and Dr. Mine, the pre-chopper length is 1.6 to 1.8. Mine is 1.8, the pre-chopper tip length. The sustainer tip length in my case is 1.7 millimeter. Once you divide the nucleus into pieces, these are all real-time video clips. Just go and eat up the pieces, as if you have cut an idli into four pieces, and you are just going inside and eating it up. So surgery becomes effortless, but it has a learning curve. You have to learn it through 15 to 20 surgeries, maybe 10. And this is a little harder nucleus. You have seen Dr. Suhail doing in very hard nucleus. I have not tried that in very hard cataracts. This is a grade three. You can do direct chop in this case, but we can do pre-chop also. Capsulorexis is done, hydrodissection is done, the antechamber is filled up with visco. And now, here goes the pre chopper. See, the nucleus tends to rotate, so you have to keep a balance in your hand and to divide the nucleus into pieces. So this is a new technique which all of us should learn. It is going to make our surgeries simple. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Now we have inauguration. All of us, please come to hall on. Yes, yes, please. Anterior, sir, anterior uh, uh, leading edge is sharp. The back edge is blunt. How hard is it? Can it can it uh, chop grade three four cataracts at ease? Yes, you. Uh, I have not tried in very hard cataracts, honestly. I have tried it up to grade three. So in grade three, would you want the retainer to come closer to the chopper or would you want the chopper to go towards the retainer? Both instruments come to each other. 
it hooks uh, the sir, sustainer the also. Initial learning curve. Would you want somebody to do it with heel on so your chamber is maintained while you are trying to do the chopping maneuver because there is always this tendency to press the posterior lip. I think that is a good idea. I have not tried with heel on, but uh, it is a good idea. The chamber will be more formed with heel on. So, so you have so more control over your hand and yes, more space to work. With. You get more uh, stable anterior chamber. That and, is a good idea. Is there a learning curve to going behind into the equatorial region? Yes, uh, initially you are afraid to do that, those who have not done that. But if you see Dr. Nito Rosatili's video, he does that with a very long chopper, about 2 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter uh, chopper, ball tipped chopper. He always goes around the equator. And if, if, we, if we learn that hand movements, it is just in indirect ophthalmoscope. We uh, see the uh, uh, you know, light here at the back of the hand. The, at this, this finger is pointing this way. Mm -hmm. So the, free, the sustainer also goes this way under the rexus margin. Then it turns and hooks the equator. Then it goes a little deeper. Then you bring it towards you. This is the movement of the left hand. So, so have you had any zonal dialysis, any tears, no, excess never, tears, never, anything? Never. Ever trying it? Zonal dialysis will never work. Uh, even if the nucleus rotates a little bit, this way and that way. But can you damage the bag as such with your pre-chopper and your retainer? No, it is designed in such a way that the pre-chopper, in my case, the bottom is also blunt. Only the front is his sharp. Okay. And uh, the, uh, it, the sustainer has a ball tip. Right. So it, even if it touches, the pos it doesn't touch. So it's like a blunt chopper. So it, it is will a, not It's a very any. blunt chopper. Right. And, and you have to feel the nucleus to go and get the area where the, uh, I the epinucleus and the nucleus uh, no, joins? No, actually you just go along the surface, go to the equator, and go behind. You don't uh, think about uh, nucleus, uh, epinucleus. Nothing. It's okay. nothing that. But if there is a, uh, you know, if there is a nice hydro delineation, if this, yes, if you do a hydro, nice hydro delineation, then you, you can you can see the epinu, you can go between epinucleus and nucleus. But if there is no good hydro delineation, you just go along the surface, hook the equator, and bring it towards you. As a beginner, I must say that I should make a, a note of caution that what your apprehension is true, very correct. If my visibility is not good, and uh, what is recommended is staining in all the cases. Monta sir has got a very nice, expensive microscope, but that may not be at the disposal of everybody. So you need to stain the capsule so that the mar margin will be visible. So what I was trying to impress upon the fact was I'm trying to scratch the cortex and the endonucleus and go and make it sure that I go and hook the equator of the nucleus rather than hooking the capsular bag. So as a, as a beginner, I ended up producing two dialysis, but I could realize that there is something uh, mischievous happening, then I have to abort that, and then I have to uh, change my strategy and uh, do the things uh, in the nice way. But th this is a possibility. If your visibility is not good, if you are not very, very sure about what you are doing, then you end up producing a dialysis also. There is a possibility that you should take into mind. Thank you very much for attending this course.